He had appeared. He said, don't touch me, because he had appeared before the Father without any blemishes on him. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Go ahead. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made of hands, that is to say, not of this building. So when Christ was resurrected, he became the high priest. When you read about Melchizedek, that's his, that is Christ in the Bible. That's his, that is his, he's the priest that sits in heaven right now for us. He's, he, he's Melchizedek. But also, go ahead, he said he had a perfect tabernacle, meaning that he has the glorified body. He got the body that we want in the future. Go ahead. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For who? For us. That's why he said, don't touch me. I got to go do a job. I'm the high priest. I'm the high priest. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. All these things that Jesus did, it wasn't for himself. It was for us. He paid a great price. And I appreciate it for it. Believe me. Because most people don't understand what they turn it down when they don't take part of these feasts when they don't follow his laws, when they don't do what he told them to do in the order, they don't understand this. They are killing themselves into an eternal death. First Corinthians chapter 15, we'll start with verse 19. Go ahead when you get it, brother. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men, most miserable. This is why we got hope in Christ. Because we, right now we most miserable because what? We get old, we crepit, we aching. I mean, things ain't working right. Stuff just ain't going right. We hoping for the resurrection so we can get this body that will never die. We hoping for this. Come on, bro. Go ahead, bro. Listen to what he say here. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. That's a, that's a key element. The first fruits of them is a meaning of that he the first of his kind. But it's going to be many come after him. Meaning that those ones that come after him are the ones that are going to be in the first resurrection. That's the other fruit. He's the first of the first fruit. That slept. He's the ones that died. He first. And he's going to have many brothers that come on just like him. Go ahead, bro. Verse 21. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes, sir. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. So Christ the first fruit, after that, they are in Christ are coming. He's going to have many. That's what we're trying to get to. He come. In that Pentecost year, that's going to be the first resurrection. He's going to resurrect the ones up that's follow his law to the T. And they're going to be the first resurrection ruling and reigning with him in the year of Pentecost. Don't think you just not, don't think, understand that you celebrated this for one reason, one reason only, to appear in this first resurrection. That's what I want. Mean. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. Let's see who made it in the first resurrection. And who are those first fruits? It's all here. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. When we read through all these scriptures, when we go back to the beginning of chapter 23, we're going to read with understanding. We're going to know what's going on. Because we're going to say who the first fruits are, and we're going to say who the first of the first fruits. Verse uh, 18. Go ahead, bro. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. See, a lot of times, people today, they really think, oh man, we're going through such a hard time. 
Man, man, look how they treat us, killing us in the street, doing all this stuff to them. If you understand what Christ reward for us in the future, this ain't nothing. That's right. This ain't nothing. That's right, bro. What we going through, what he got prepared for us to be a God like him, to able to stop the rain from stop raining, to create a planet, to create Mars, Jupiter, all this, the sun. Don't you understand? You gonna have that same power? And you talking about oh my leg hurt. Oh this hurt. Oh that hurt. Oh I can't get along with this person. I can't get along with that person. I can't do all this stuff but focus. A lot of people just focusing on painful stuff, just focusing on different type of people instead of focusing on his word. And I'm gonna call it that too, man. I do it sometimes myself. We gotta beat this place down. Well, listen to what he's saying here. Keep going. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, we're waiting to be manifest, meaning he gives us our glorified body. We wait for this. Now, we sons of God now, partly, because we follow the laws. We're talking about the women too, eh? Women ain't left out either now. It just says sons of God. But he said we're waiting for the manifestation of being God. We waiting on that. We go ahead. This is what he said. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Go ahead. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. See, this is a bondage of corruption right now living in this body. Like I said, at one time they were living to, living to be seven, eight, nine hundred years. But now, look at now, 70 years he's given us now. That's, right. That's bondage. And believe me, it come fast too, before you know it, you're going to be up on it. Believe me. Believe me. <laughs> before you know it, you'll be up on that 70. <laughs> and you say, man, what the time I've been? My brother, he can contest that. He was 65. 65. See what I'm saying? He can contest that. He up on it. But he got a more glorious thing he pushing toward. We all are pushing toward this, man. Pushing toward this. Go ahead, bro. 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Yes, sir. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. See, the first fruits of the Spirit. Jesus said, I'm the first of the first fruit. Who would be the first? Who are they? Those are the ones that in the first resurrection, when the year of Pentecost comes, at the end, they're going to be resurrected up. Those are the first ones. Let me show you that. But jump down to verse 29. Jump down to verse 29. Listen to what he said here. See, I'm telling you, this Pentecost year is the year of harvest. The world is like a field. And Jesus is giving symbolism, saying, I'm going to harvest this crop. Guess who the crop? We are. Some of us weep. And some of us tags. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't mess with nothing. He don't want us to mess with anything. He said, I separate them at the harvest. Come on. I separate them at Pentecost. <laughs> this is all it is. That's all it is. Pentecost is just the resurrection. That's it. The first resurrection. But this is what he say here. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. The firstborn of many brothers. Jesus is our brother at this time. Go be our brother. He's just the firstborn. Firstborn. The first fruit. We going to join him as brother. Can you just imagine that? No. That's serious. He gave up. And when Jesus came out of the grave, he said, all power was given into me. That's right. All power. That's right. Ain't nothing else but left out there. But he telling me I'm gonna be his brother, all power gonna be given to me too if I make it. Understand that. That's why God making sure that we understand before he give us that position of authority. Mm -hmm. Because he already got a crazy batch already running around here now, Satan and his followers. And he's gonna make that same mistake again. I ain't gonna say mistake, but he's gonna do something different now. He makes sure we go through a training system, which is the word. This is the plan. Let's go back to Vegas chapter 23. We don't understand this right here. 
You been to chapter 23 and verse 9. We don't get to that, that, that other food in a minute. But we got to get the spiritual food. I want to know why I'm here and why I'm doing this. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 9. Read with some understanding. All of these feasts they are a reflection of Jesus. He's giving us his plan for salvation. Verse 9. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then, then ye shall bring sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. Listen to that. He said he shall bring a sheep to the first fruits of the harvest to be free. Who's the priest? Jesus. Just look at it like he's the priest. He said he bring a sheep. He also, he got to bring it to sheep that the wave it. And that's what he did. Went up to the wave before the father. Wave himself and said, I'm acceptable now. Now I got to come back down here and get the rest of my people. But go ahead. This is what he said. Here. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord uh -huh. to become accepted for you. To, to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave. When Mary, when Mary, came, when Mary came to touch Jesus, what did he say? Touch him now. Right. Because I got to go up here before my father. When did he come to appear before the father? The first day of the week. This day. Same day. But go ahead, bro. Mm. Mm. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. And ye shall offer that day when ye weigh the sheep, and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Who's that he lamb? Jesus. Right. All this thing is pointing toward Jesus. Everything, the year, this Pentecost feast is pointing to Jesus. He's just using symbolism. He's using crops. That's all it is. It's a harvest crop. Go ahead. Jump down to verse, uh, oh yeah. Jump down, jump down to verse 15. Get down to the ordinance of this feast. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. See, after that first year, after, Pent after Passover, the next, that Sunday, after that Sabbath, we count seven Sabbaths all the way down. Or counting 49 days all the way down. And that's when we're going to get Pentecost. That's all they mean, 50. That's it. Ain't nothing real special about it. It's just 50 days. That's it. But it got a meaning to it. He giving us the year that he gonna resurrect us out. It's gonna be Pentecost, the same day we right here taking upon ourselves to worship. This is resurrection day. The ones that gonna be in the first resurrection. Go ahead, bro. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, uh -huh. and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Yes, sir. You go offer a new meat offering to the Lord. You gonna. Jump down to verse uh, 21. This is the orders of the, the, the past, uh, this is the uh, Pentecost, or the Feast of Harvest. Go ahead. And ye shall proclaim on the seventh same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no survival work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwelling throughout your generation. This is the rules of the Pentecost season. We must not doing most of our work, and going to our jobs, and you should keep it in all your dwellings. Wherever you at, you need to keep this. You need to keep this. It's a very significant story that Jesus is telling us for our salvation. Mm. When Pentecost come up, we over there in the wilderness at that time for three and a half years, we understand. One of the years is going to be a year where we understand, not before we, before, excuse me back up, before we get there, before we get there, we understand what we're supposed to be doing. Instead of getting to the wilderness and don't know what you're supposed to be doing and get cut off in the wilderness. Because a lot of them are going to get cut off because they're over there without even getting knowledge. So we got to understand what we're doing. Let's go to Acts chapter 20 and verse 16. Y'all always want to follow Paul. Let's see what Paul will be. 
Acts chapter 20 and verse 15. Let's see if Paul kept the feast. And you got churches out here who are Pentecostal churches. <laughs> they don't even keep the year of the, the, the Pentecost feast. How crazy is that? <laughs> don't make no sense. Acts chapter 20 and verse 16. Let's look at Paul. Go ahead. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. Mm -hmm. For he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. What? Let me tell you, Paul kept Pentecost? He said he faced it, meaning he hurried, hurried. You gotta get it inside, man. I gotta be there because Paul understands the significance of it. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. That's why we haste to get this food ready. We haste to come, in, come together on this, on this Pentecost so we understand it's accounted for our salvation. We're going to need it all, y'all. We're going to need everything. We're going to need all these holy days, these Sabbaths to count when God start opening up books and judging people. We're going to need it. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Now, this is, this, this is the uh, this is script, this is the chapter I'm going to take you and try to tell, tell you that the holy day has been done away with. Now, Paul wrote Colossians. He wrote Colossians. And he was celebrating Pentecost in Acts. We waited on the Colossians. They're going to tell me that you're not supposed to do the holy days. They don't understand what the scripture is talking about. We're going to read verse 8 and we'll jump to 14. And this is, what, this is what Paul said right here. Go ahead, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. He tell you to be aware of that. When they are trying to entice you to sin. Oh, brother, come on over here to our church. We ain't got to follow the law. Y'all got too many of the law. Y'all can't eat bread with yeast in it for a week. Y'all got to fast a whole day. Y'all got to be off of work. Man, Jesus paid for all that. You ain't got to do all that. Philosophy. And you let them steal your crown away from you, you ought to go to hell. Because if you sit before us and you read this stuff and you understand it, that's your fault now. That's your fault. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let people talk to get a tongue of action to you. Make sure you say, okay, bro, read it to me. Now go to uh, verse uh, 14. Verse 14. Go ahead. Blot me out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, uh -huh. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. See? Well, a person go here with no understanding saying, see, God will deal with all them old laws there, the commandments, all these feast days, and they don't understand what he blotted out that was against us. That was the animal sacrifice law. That was it. The animal sacrifice law. He died one time for us so we don't have to go and kill all our animals just to get remission of sin. That's what it is. Go ahead. Listen to what he say here. And having small principalities and powers, uh -huh. he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Yes, sir. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of that holy day. All the new moon, all the Sabbath days. Now Paul wrote this, and he the one said he go hasted to go to a uh, Pentecost so he can get there. He heard up to get there. So you mean to tell me Paul telling me not to observe the holy day? No, he telling us that take a part of the holy day. Don't don't worry about what people gonna say about you. You make sure you do according to what the thus said the Lord. Don't let no man judge you because you. Uh, taking part in, in uh, eating the correct meat, or you take a part of the holy day, respect for holy day, don't let them judge you. They're not your judge. This is what Paul said. But they're going to take you here, remember this, they're going to take you here to do away with the Sabbath day, they're going to do away with the holy day, they're going to do away with all from this one particular scripture without even without understanding. Go ahead, verse 17. 
which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. It's a shadow. All these ordinances that he put in Leviticus all the way down to when he came is a shadow of what he's going to do, like the Passover lamb. That was a shadow of him coming down on the cross, like Pentecost. This thing right here is going to take place when the resurrection is going to come up in the year of Pentecost. We just preparing ourselves for this. The understanding of it. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. This is where Pentecost, and the word Pentecost first came into play right here in Acts. There's nothing wrong with the word Pentecost, but it will call something else in the Old Testament, which is Feast of Weeks or Feast of Harvest. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Why were they there at Pentecost? To celebrate Pentecost. You know what the word tells you? It was there waiting on the Holy Spirit coming, come in and well, they were waiting on it. That's right. No, that ain't what this is about. All the Israelites were there for one particular reason only. Just like Paul got back to uh, uh, Jerusalem for the Pentecost. Because he understood the law. We got to be up there. He said three times a year, you will show up here. That's a law. That's a commandment. Go ahead. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Yes, sir. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh huh. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Mm -hmm. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now understand, all the Israelites and, and other people were there from different sectors of the world. They was there from different sectors of the world, and they was there, they didn't know, everybody didn't know they didn't know the same language. So what the Holy Spirit was doing, the, the 12 disciples was talking with the Holy Spirit, but he they was in the ear telling them, now this is what he said in your tongue. This is what he said in your tongue. All the way down from the Greeks, the Asians, the, the Parthians, all these different types of uh, different languages, the Holy Spirit was interpreting their language so they can understand. That's the only thing it was. But what they tell you in the, in the, in the church today, they wait on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has been there. Forever, been there since the beginning of time. He always been there. It gets a little rain out there. Jump down to verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another. What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, These men are full of new wine. Because they heard every man speaking a different language. They thought they would feel it. I thought they were just talking bad. Mm -hmm. No. Everybody heard it through the interpretation of those angels telling them what they said in their language. That's it. Now let's get to, we're going to skip the rest of that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Now this is going to get all the way down to the, what we're here today for, which is Pentecost and understanding. But I had to lay that foundation a little bit so you can understand how the Passover come into play when Jesus died and when he was resurrected up and he had to go with and be the sheep for the way offering before uh, the Lord. This is what it is, y'all. Yeah. It's way out there, but it's all right. Matthew chapter 24. About the top of the Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, Jesus do his feast in his old day. He trying to show us when is the time of the end of the world? He's showing us through here. He made sure you understand. Like he told us in Matthew in the same chapter, he said, once you see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel and the prophets, feed to the wilderness. That's right. We know when they build that third temple in Jerusalem, 
that the Pope gonna go over there and sit over there and that time call himself God. We know that it's time for us to go. Period. To flee into the wilderness. We understand that. Understand that. Jump down to verse 29. Let's look at this. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Uh -huh. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So Jesus is telling us that he's going to come immediately after the tribulation. But you know what the word is telling us? We're going to be taken off the earth. People are going to be left behind here. And the world is going to continue to go on as it is. No, Jesus ain't going to have no secret rapture. All this stuff from the seven trumpets being blown got to be fulfilled. All the way down to the end. Well, listen to what he's saying. We get to the end of this. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is Pentecost. He's going to gather the, the harvest in from one end on earth to the other. He's going to gather us all in, the ones that make it in that first resurrection. This is why we celebrate this. Wow. This is why we celebrate this. I'm going to, go to, let's go to go, let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. I'm going to skip those two. You go back and refer to them. But I'm going to be kind of listening. Matthew 13 and verse 24. Let's understand about this harvest. This Pentecost is a harvest. Harvesting in the crops. God telling us. The harvest back in the Jerusalem day, and when they used to uh, take part and harvest the crops at the end of the year and bring them up to Jerusalem, they used to do that and offer it to the priest. This is what Jesus is going to do for us. Once those angels sit up there and harvest the crops of the world, the people of the world that want to be the first resurrection, they're going back to be with Jesus. They are going to be the weak and the tares that don't make it, they're going to let them fight. Let's go clear it up right here. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. Go ahead, brother. Another power put me forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his feet. To the kingdom of heaven, he's always talking about something symbolic. Symbolic. The seed is the children of God now. The kingdom of the world is talking about talking about. Well, he's going to tell you, I'm going to get ahead of myself. But go ahead, verse 25. But well, while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Uh -huh. But when the blade was sprung up uh -huh. and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Yes, sir. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, is not thy so good seed in thy field? From whence then? As it tear. He said, so didn't you put a good seed? Did you give him your good law? Did you give him all the good stuff? He said, well, all these evil people popping up in, in, in your field, in your work, which is the tares. And, it, and this man, he wanted to go and try to separate too. But listen to what the Lord said right here. Go ahead. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. Uh -huh. The servant said unto him, Would thou then that we go and gather them up 